All right, what's happening, everybody? Sorry, I started a few minutes late, but I had to set some things up that I didn't realize I was gonna have to set up. But anyway, what's happening? Philip, Triforce Hero, Enrique, Amanda, Art Witchery, Joyce, Sarah, Angela. What's happening, everybody? So today, uh, you know, um, today's kind of free and open a little bit um, for the most part. So I'm going to probably use this darker pencil. Um, I need to find a pencil extender that I have somewhere, but oh well, it should be fine. Um, so I'll show you guys what I have going on here. So this is pretty cool. So I found this thing online. It's like a little reference thing, but what I can do with this thing is I can move the light a little bit um, to certain areas. Uh, but to be honest, I don't really want to focus on lighting today because I I'm, I'm really want to do that. I think tomorrow I'll focus more on lighting uh, with, with painting and stuff. Um, but I can move the light and the cool thing is I can then move a secondary light source which is like a reflected light I don't know if you guys can see that. And I can also rotate this thing. and um, Yeah, there's a secondary reflected light that I can throw on here. So this is a pretty cool... There we go. More reflected light. But I think uh, today I want to, like, make this thing fully lit up. For the most part, if I can, let me see. Go to the front. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we'll try to keep it fully lit. Because um, I want to focus, I want to kind of focus on uh, the shapes and stuff of the planes. So this is like, this is a way to. Let me see if I can zoom this somehow. Zoom this in a bit. So I want to I want to focus on the planes. As we can see, I mean, this is a simplified portrait, male portrait. And I also have one of these in real life, like a plastic thing. I actually have like a, a thing in another room that I could draw from. But. Um, I think this is kind of cool. It's pretty useful and you know, this is really just a way for me to start practicing a little bit more, some portraits and just do some different stuff. Um, and kind of understand the simplified planes of the face. So that's kind of what I'm going to do today. Just kind of draw a little bit, maybe do some of it in pen. Um, but I don't want to get too caught up in the lighting and everything. Um, but I guess we should just start, if I can move this thing, here we go, like head on, face on maybe. The lighting looks pretty crazy. Something like that maybe. Anyway, um, the air is bad today, still bad. Yeah, air is not good. I don't like. Uh, I don't like the air. It sucks. It sucks here now. I moved to California because I thought it'd be nice here, nice to live here. There's mountains, all this cool stuff, and now you can't even go outside without dying. So what this, what this also helps me to do is to remember to draw with straight lines. So that's really what I want to try to focus on. So we'll just focus on the big, these big plane shapes first. And uh, we'll see if I can, you know, see what I can make out of this thing. So let's, yeah, let's try to, let's go big, let's go do big. Big shapes first. I 
And I, people have asked me like for so much, for so long, like draw portraits, like teach us how to draw portraits, teach us how to do this. Well, here's me practicing. This is what I would do. You know, just start, you know, the neck comes down here. Find a resource like this online. It's easy to find. Just type in reference, portrait references for drawing, for art, 3D. You know, you can find this stuff. I'll probably link this thing in the uh, description or whatever at the end of the video. It's on ArtStation. So if you just go to like, if you type in uh, uh, head light references, ArtStation, um, you'll find it in Google, I'm sure. It's a male head portrait reference. Yeah, so it's on art it's on art station here. Let me let me paste let me see if I can paste the link for you guys real quick. So if you look in the chat, this is a link to what I'm using right now. It should work. So there's the link. I don't know why it's not there we go. Created a hyperlink. So um yeah, you can find that tool on there. He also has a, the same guy, if you go to his profile or whatever, he has a female head as well. It's a little bit different, not a whole lot. But, um... So even with something like this, even though it's simplified, I mean, you're still focusing on... You still end up focusing on the same things, you know, the placement of the eyes, placement of knows the features because that's what's important in a portrait is like where these features are going to be placed and that's how you get a likeness or even just a portrait you know um finding out where the ears are and where they line up with the rest of the portrait But like I said, I haven't drawn many portraits. It's been a little while, so I'll probably be a little a little slow here in the beginning. But it's all right, you know. It's okay to just kind of take my time in the beginning. I might not even, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do pen and ink with these. I mean, there might not be any reason. You guys can see the pencil marks pretty well. But maybe we'll do some of that at the very end. I may have to change the title of this live stream. <laughs> But really this tool, I mean, it's good for this online tool. It's good for just lighting, you know. Um, it's references for lighting. You can't really move the light as much. You know, it has these pre-programmed things. You move this slider, it changes the light. But it's still pretty useful. So what I'm, what I'm paying attention to right now, for anybody who's wondering, like, what I'm thinking. So I, I, I kind of made a decision for the ears so it you eventually just have to make a decision right like i drew this shape of the head so now I, the based on this shape of the head that was really my decision is, is the height versus the width which i kind of guessed now i just guess where are the ears maybe they're a little high up than they should be maybe they should be a little bit lower but whatever i'll probably find out in the end but now I can base now I can base these other features inside based on these location of the ears. So you have to make a decision about stuff, you know, like and you have to stick with it. So whether you draw the eyes, if you just start out with an eye, like if I start out a portrait over here and I start drawing the eye first, right? So if I start out drawing this eye, everything else I draw from then on has to be in reference, like has to be in proportion related to the eye, right? Like now, like if I draw the eye that small or that big, really, the head's gonna be, the head has to be a certain size around it. I can't draw the head this big around the eye because then it's out of proportion, doesn't fit. So 
really the first thing you come up with, no matter where you start, because people always ask me, like, where do you, should you start with the eyes or the nose or the features, or should you start with the face shape? It doesn't matter. Whatever you start with, everything else is related to that. So that's, that's how I, like, go about making these other marks, because now I'm, I'm relating these lines to the outside. I'm relating the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the ears, and now i got to relate the eyes to the ears, these other lines to the ears. And then once I feel like I got like the eyes in the right spot, then I can relate things closer to the eye to those marks, you know? It's all, it's all these relationships, that's, you know. So I hope that makes sense. I hope somebody is listening or uh, understands what I'm saying <laughs> or cares, I guess. But yeah, that's kind of what what I'm thinking, going with how I, how I think about this stuff. It's all relationships. And like I said, I'm just trying to block this in with straight lines, kind of, to begin with. But this can really teach you how to go about drawing portraits and understanding light and how things curve. Like all these planes, like this plane, this plane, this plane, this these are all facing different ways. You know, they're all they're all facing different directions. And that's what it's saying, you know, basically. So if this thing's being lit up from a certain way, then this plane facing that light is going to be much lighter. This one will be a little bit darker. This one will be even more dark, and this one will be really dark. And that's how you create the illusion. And then if you translate that into a portrait you were actually drawing, these lines just become a little more blurry. They're not as, you know what I mean? They're not hard lines, but these lines just help kind of show, you know, the separation of these planes of the head, the kind of which way these areas of the head are facing. You know, it's like when you take like a, a pool ball or like a soccer ball or something and you, instead of it being smooth, you create it out of squares or, you know, or hexagons or whatever. That's kind of what this is doing basically. It's like if you sculpted it out of clay or wood or something, you know, you're carving it out of wood, creating all these flat areas and then you smooth out all these lines. You know, you eventually smooth all these things out. But see, every line that I'm making, I'm, I'm lining it up with something else. I'm not just randomly guessing. Like this line right here I'm about to make to go down to the mouth. I'm lining it up. I'm looking at, okay, where is it? Where does it start? Well, I, I line it up with the ear and the nose. I make sure that everything is lining up, you know, tops of the nostrils here. And if something doesn't line up, then I'm like, okay, I got to fix something. Something's off. So every, every, every decision I make and the angle that I'm making the line, like I'm consciously comparing it. I'm looking at things like, okay, where these two lines meet, where does that line up on the face? Every, everything is related. Everything's related. And, and this goes for like anything I draw, like anything. You know, if I'm drawing buildings, I'm drawing a landscape, like this is how I do it. You know, you just constantly need to think about lining things up, comparing, everything is related. It's all, it's all proportions, proportional, it's all relative.
and this is obviously this face is very symmetrical so you kind of have to keep things pretty symmetrical but the the thing about this head it is kind of it is pretty complicated because there's all these different planes but the main thing to remember and what I'm re reminding myself right now is I did start out with the large shape and then I started going into smaller and smaller shapes but even just the mouth area there's a larger shape you know, there's this larger shape around the entire mouth area that probably makes sense to put in before I go in and start drawing all the lips and all these little tiny shapes. You know, draw this whole area first. You know, make sense of it down to the chin. You know, have it connected to something. And then now I can start going inside a little bit more. I'm kind of drawing this small, so it's hard to get these smaller lines in there, but, you know, today's about simplifying anyway, so. Hmm, what's going on here? Okay, so the lines go down to here, down to here. So this is pretty much almost done. It's just I need to put in this other eye. And this thing's really good at, at this thing's really good at showing you how to easily draw certain facial features as well, which maybe I can talk about since today is about simplifying overall. I did want to another day this week. I'm going to draw just facial features and stuff a lot, but this is good because uh, I know it looks a little it looks a little weird without shading. I think shading really does kind of help it. I didn't really plan on doing a whole lot of shading or anything, but it may be useful to just show the some of it, you know. Um, So now I can go back and I can refine some of this if I want, so make more lines, more planes. You know, the nose is probably a little bit big. I know this kind of looks funny because this is actually the whole entire nostril. So the, actually the, the little holes of the nostril are under here smaller. So these are just kind of the planes of the nose here. Construction of the nose. So Pretty cool. I mean, it's cool to study this kind of stuff, especially with the, when you get into the lighting and everything. You know, maybe I can do some of that today, some of the shading, since I'm gonna be, I'll be painting this stuff tomorrow. So I might as well shade some of it today and just do it in shading. So that's kind of a warm up, I guess. I can do another one. I mean, I'll probably do a few of these different angles, different lighting scenarios. It's on this like square thing. And see the square thing gives you perspective as well because now you can see which you know the vanishing point if you were to draw a line that extends from this these angles that creates the vanishing point the vanishing point goes up you know it's up there that's where our eye level is something something like that Anyway, um, yeah, so that's just a quick warm, a quick warm up sketch here. Like I said, folks, this is just, we're just practicing, we're just playing around. So let's take a look at this again. 
as my computer freezes up. Oh, don't do this now. Come on. I'm trying to switch. <laughs> it's completely frozen. Oh, this is not good. Why is it frozen? I can't switch to any other scene. This is not good. Might be too much to handle. Okay, well this is good to learn anyway. What my computer is capable of doing at the moment. I think this 3D thing is too... I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna switch to another scene one more time. Ah, keeps freezing up. What the heck? Sorry folks, I'm trying to... I want to delete this thing now so that I can actually use my computer. But I can't even... it won't even let me click anything. And I can't edit the program because then my stream will stop. I don't want that. Okay, here we go. Okay, don't know why I did that. Let's get that out of here. Sorry folks, hang tight with me here for a second. Okay, now it's working, but I don't think, well, maybe I'll just keep, yeah. What I'm gonna have to do Sorry folks. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna have to just show you the reference here and then I'm gonna have to just draw it uh, without you guys seeing the reference, but I'm gonna try to show you what I'm gonna draw. So let's try like a different angle. Which angle? I kinda like it facing this way. That's kinda cool. That's kind of a cool lighting scenario. His nose is really lit up. So let's try something like that. That's kind of different um, than what we just did, of course. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you're not gonna be able to see the reference, unfortunately, because it just it was freezing up for some reason. But from time to time, I can go back and just hey, here's the reference. That's what I'm doing. So, all right, um, I'm gonna try this one. I want to ink maybe because um, I think it would be pretty nice with the shad with the shadowing and the the highlights. Could be pretty cool. So, I'm gonna use a lighter pencil on this one. So now we have non-symmetrical things happening here and it's a bit, um, a bit different. But I'm a, there's, you know, the, I basically treat it the same way I just did that portrait you saw here. Even though, I mean, it's very sketchy looking, it's not that great, but it, you know, if I was to sit here and shade this thing, it's it would actually look really good once you get the lights in there and get more form to it. But like I said, just wanted something a warm up at the moment. Um, so let's try something here. 
So what I'm doing right now, I'm making a decision. Okay, this is the top and this is that side and the ear is right here. You guys can't even see what I'm drawing anyway, but I'm basically just making decisions. So But now everything, just on these small single decisions I just made, everything has to fit the rest of that. Otherwise, it's going to be out of proportion, right? So when I compare the top of the ear, here's the point of the top of the ear. Now, where does that line up? What is over here on the other side of the head? If we look at the reference, we can see the top of the ear. You line it up. It's kind of the point of the eyebrow on the other side of the head. You guys see that? I mean, pretty close. The point of the eyebrow is a little bit higher, so that's what I'm going to do. Now I line this up. Okay, the point of the eyebrow is a little bit higher. I don't know exactly where it is vertically, but I know horizontally it's about, you know, right here. And the way I'm guesstimating that, it looks pretty good. It's probably, you know, it could be over here, it could be here, it could be there. Not sure yet. So eventually, I'll find my way around there and I'll make that decision of where that should line up. Um, and it's all just based on all these other decisions that, that I make. Just trying to make this stream to be a really helpful one for folks who want to draw portraits or really just draw anything. Like this is literally what I do every time I draw something. What, all the streams you guys saw in the past, I didn't really explain this kind of stuff in the past because it's so intuitive to me that I don't even, I don't really think about it when I'm drawing like animals or drawing from a photo reference or drawing buildings or something. It's not something I consciously think about like, you know, like, oh, this lines up with this and this does this. It's just not something I consciously thinking of, but it does happen in my head. If that makes sense. Big shapes, big shapes, start out with big shapes. So is the head too skinny there? Not sure yet, looks okay, I think. You know, not gonna be perfect. Nothing's ever perfect, so it doesn't even really matter. As long as it looks like a human head, somewhat proportional, or a human male head, I guess, then I'm in business. I'm good. We're doing good. It's on this square clay block thingy, plastic block. Draw in some nice perspective here. Something like that, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, that part I'm not really concerned about. So big shape first, big shapes. But now the main thing I really wanna focus on here is the light versus shadow, right? And I'm gonna talk more about this tomorrow, but these are the shapes I can define, you know? Cause that's, that's what's gonna give this thing form, that's what gives it and form is what creates reality. That's why we see things in like three dimensionals, you know, 3D, because we have light. We have light in the world, we have this form. So this is all shadow. This whole thing I just drew, none of the shapes inside of that really matter. Um, it only matters when you have like a strong reflected light coming in and I didn't change the secondary light source, so this reference doesn't really have much reflected light. So if I wanted, I could try to show you guys, see I can bring in more reflected light, really light up that shadow. Um, I think I might just add a little tiny bit, maybe. I kind of like it being very, um, I kind of like it not being reflected that much. Kind of like it being very dark, having a clear separation like that, especially since this is one of the first ones I'm drawing. Uh, so, you know, I think his head is probably a little too skinny, but.
like I said, I'm not too, too concerned because today it's, it's not really about likeness. You know what I mean? I'm not really trying to go for like super duper likeness or anything because it's just a random head. You know, it's more about planes, simplification, and, you know, basic overall drawing, proportions, practice, and, uh, yeah, just simplifying, understanding these planes, these overall shapes, because this is going to be helpful for Thursday and Friday when I do real portrait studies in paint, and, uh, I'm going to have to draw the, the portraits and paint them. And I'm going to have to focus on the planes. The, you know, these planes are going to be, become very important. So once again, now I have to decide where's the bottom of the nose compared to the ear. And did I make, is the ear too big? Or, you know, bottom of the nose is like down here. and the edge of the eye. So the face is really like a cube if you look at it. Um, okay, we're gonna. I have a non-responsive application right now, I'm trying to get it to close. Okay, I think it did maybe. No, it didn't. Oh, well. Uh, okay. So the, the face is like a cube when you think about it. So the edge of the corner of the eye is where it turns. So if you guys look at... the reference here, uh, you can see the corner of the, the eyes where the head turns to the side, like where the ears are. You know, it's like it's like the corner of a cube, really to some extent. One second, folks, I'm trying to... Did I attend art school? If so, where? Um, I didn't go to art school. I went to a community college and then just a regular college after that. And uh, I went in Delaware. I didn't go to any big school or anything. Sorry folks, I'm trying to kill a certain process right now that I should have killed before the live stream. And uh, it's never really given me problems, but now I need to get rid of this thing. Cause it's freezing up and yeah so I just went to like a regular college um, I went for graphic design but I've been drawing most of my life and I've you know I just read a lot of books over the years and seen a lot of things like I've just learned a lot of stuff I just soaked up a lot of stuff um, over the years Okay, should be good now, I think. So yeah, it's just been, you know, I just, I soak things up like a sponge and I try to, I try to apply it to, you know, I try to use it. I try to use the knowledge that I gain. And I, Cause the only way to keep the knowledge you gain is to is to put it into practice to use it you know you can have all this knowledge in your head but if you're not like applying it to to stuff then uh, you know so the corner of the eyes is what I'm looking for now so I'm looking for the you know where does this line up where does that uh, you know how far how far over from the ear um, is that point and where is it it's kind of like this boom something like that so it's all perspective as well. So the corner of this eye to this eye, 
So now everything has to be kind of on that line, the line of the lips, line of that, line of the chin, line of the nose, line of the mouth. We have this perspective of the head, right? So that's one thing to always look for when you're doing these weird angles of the head, is you always want this stuff to be kind of parallel for the most part. Depends on how much perspective is in your drawing, because it could change. You know, it, could, it can change. Um, and honestly, this this head actually doesn't even have that much perspective. It's actually a bit lower, which actually helps because now it corrects this line that I did wrong for the nose. I knew something was off there. So this this line is actually a bit flatter for perspective. So, but you guys get the idea, like everything is, like I said, it's all just parallel, it all relates, everything is relative. Um, so this line might even be a little bit lower than this pretty much level there. Comes down, this comes down a little bit. And then the nose is there, something like that. We'll figure that out eventually, but for now, try to keep focusing on the big shapes, head coming down. So a lot of this is, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to define the light versus shadow. So right here, this is the line shadow, and the shadow kind of goes up here as well. So this is all shadow, little, most, a little bit of reflected light. It's actually reflected light, it's not really shadow. But reflected light is, is reflected light is the shadow value, it's still in the shadows, it's just a bit lighter. I really like how the the eyelid here is catching a lot of light. That's pretty cool. This is going to make a cool drawing, I think. Uh, if you guys look at the reference, see that eyelid, the eye is catching that light as well as the nose. So it's, it's pretty interesting, uh, pretty nice looking lighting effect. What does the Schaefer in your name mean? Uh, it's my last name. Schaefer means shepherd, I believe. Something like that. It's German. My ancestors came over here from Germany in 1850, I believe, or 51. Something like that. Pretty cool. Not sure why they came over, but it would be interesting to ask them if I could. But they're dead, so I can't. Uh, <laughs> So line of, I'm doing the line of light and shadow right now. I'm not even really focusing on the actual, you know, I'm, I'm, I am focusing on it because I'm seeing where the light and shadow is hitting on the, around these forms. But I'm kind of using this light versus shadow to, to help guide me for finding the rest See, and in here it's just so dark, I can't even see what's going on. So, a bunch of those, those planes don't even matter. You know, if you, if you just see a bunch of shadow, you can't really see anything. Then hey, you know, draw it like that. There's no reason to define all these other forms and stuff if you can't see it anyway. Would you draw this on a canvas the same as you're doing now and then paint and soften the features? Well, I mean, 
doing a regular if i was doing like drawing like a regular portrait i mean i'm gonna do a portrait study like thursday and friday so we're gonna find out what i'm gonna end up doing but i wouldn't draw this uh, you know depending on the portrait it, it all depends i wouldn't draw every single one of these planes in what it what it does is give you an idea for for turning form and light and how light hits things and you know where these these planes are and exist you wouldn't necessarily make it as this blocky but i i would use i would use straight lines to draw it um and definitely soften it and stuff um but since I'm kind of doing a study of this mannequin type of thing, I'm kind of drawing all the certain lines and stuff that it's showing me. Because the more you, more you draw this kind of thing, you know, you kind of solidify, okay, this is that front facing cheek plane that I drew over here. It, these, these things, even though it's turned, it's still, you get the same, you know, you're relating all these planes, like, okay, these, you know, there's three planes for the forehead and the front, one big plane on the side, um, you know, this kind of triangular type of form, right, to connect the eyes, same thing over here. So it's just, it's kind of a way to just study these kinds of things. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily draw all these lines if I was drawing a regular portrait, you know. Like these, like the forehead, I wouldn't really need to draw out the plain lines if I was drawing a regular portrait, you know what I mean? I wouldn't need, need to draw all these things. What I would do is when I'm painting it, I would keep these planes in mind and realize that, okay, if the light's over here, this plane's gonna be much lighter than this plane over here. And it's gonna, and this plane is gonna be in between this one and this one. So that's just the idea, I think, you know, that's how I think about it anyway. It's just to help you understand these planes, how form is created on a portrait, how to simplify things. Because portraits are, you know, it's one of the most difficult things to draw and to paint and to just for art in general. So having this tool that, that simplifies it is just, it's invaluable, you know. I don't really understand the word invaluable. Like to say something's invaluable, doesn't that mean like it's not valuable? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, logically. I'm not an English major, just an artist, but like, wouldn't you say this tool is very valuable, not invaluable? If something was invaluable, isn't it like, if something's invalid, that means it's not valid. So if it's invaluable, doesn't that mean it's not valuable? Just asking, that's all. Rhetorical type of question, I guess. So now I feel pretty good about everything I have, obviously. I mean, I made it this far into the drawing, so everything's going pretty, pretty well for the most part. So now what I can do is just start drawing up from here, from the bottom, and try to connect that from the bottom of the nose to the, you know, to the bottom of the lips or whatever, kind of connect. these kinds of lines. <clears throat> you can't place a value on it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You made sense, to, you sold me. You sold me on the idea, I get it. This stuff's all in shadow. Its value cannot be estimated. Yeah, I mean, I understand what it's supposed to mean, but why is, then explain to me the word invalid. I think your explanation is invalid. <laughs> 
<laughs> Your explanation of invaluable is invalid, right? What does that mean? Maybe I'm just a moron, which could be true, but it doesn't matter. I'm just being dumb. It's fun to be dumb. You know, if you know everything, then it's not as fun anymore. All right, well, let's do this one in pen and ink. I think it'd be pretty cool. I think this angle probably comes out a little bit more. Something I may not even do all this stuff down here, but it's kind of cool to draw some of it in. And we can just guess some of that stuff. Um, I know invalid's another thing. Invalid means it's not valid. So logically, con to be consistent, wouldn't invaluable mean it's not valuable? You see what I'm saying? Inconsistencies, that's all I'm saying. English is full of them. That's what's annoying to me. Because I try to be logical like that. But they always give these inconsistencies, you know? Invalid. Oh, it doesn't mean like, you know, it means it's not valid. It means, you know, but invaluable doesn't mean not valuable. It means you can't estimate the value. So what? What? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But I don't want to argue semantics, even though that's what we're doing. <laughs> the whole point of it. All right, let's uh, get back to drawing. All I was saying was this tool is very valuable, this drawing tool. I just like questioning those silly inconsistencies like that and things. It's like, yeah, I wonder where all this stuff comes from. I mean, I, I know a lot of it comes from other languages and just, they all have all these different origins. It's like nobody sat down and like planned out English language for it to make sense. It's all just taken from everywhere else and put together and, you know. It's just fun to think about those kind of things. For me anyway, I don't know why. It's just what my brain does, you know? No worries, hey, Yami. Thanks for tuning in. Well, if something is invalid, is it void? Yeah, isn't that the same thing? Void and inv invalid? Yeah, same thing. I think. That's a trick. I think I feel like you're asking me a trick question or something. But I like how I got you guys talking now. <laughs> got you guys arguing about that. <laughs> about the word <laughs> uh, I'm just being a troll on my own stream just trolling you guys man I'm trolling you guys I don't even believe the things I'm saying getting all the yeah where's Philip when you need him isn't he the writer where's Philip at he's the writer he should be able, he should be able to explain this nonsense to us <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot he can't tune into these live streams during the week now it's very true Actually extends a little bit further. Oh well, some of those lines are a little off. But it's okay. Just keep it going, keep it moving. 
So yeah, the, the, the main important thing here, what I'm trying to say is, with this one at least, is that line of light versus shadow. It's always important to, to determine, even if it's very something very subtle, you know? That's always the, uh, it's always good like in a painting and stuff to really define the light versus the shadow, because if, usually if you don't do that, Sometimes it, sometimes it can be easy to confuse the, to confound your values a bit. So some of these forms over here, I don't even really have to, have to explain because it's just going to end up, they'll be shrouded in mystery in the shadow region. Yeah, the stream, uh, you mentioned portrait on Thursday and Friday, what time? Uh, I'm doing a stream every weekday at 5.10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you go, uh, Mary, if you go to your subscriptions page on YouTube, so on the, on the side of your browser, or I don't know if you're on your phone, I don't know, but if, if you click the subscriptions tab, wherever you're at, uh, you can already see all the streams I have scheduled and it'll tell you your, like whatever time zone you're in, it'll tell you your time when it's going to start for you. So that's really the best way to like check those things. So just go to your subscriptions tab. It's already, they're already scheduled for this whole week. I should just start saying, yeah, go to your subscriptions tab. You know, the little tab nobody ever clicks on to see when other people upload videos. <laughs> nobody ever clicks that stuff. They get distracted by the, rec the YouTube recommended videos. They steal the, the limelight for your subscriptions. They don't, you, don't, you don't actually see what your people you subscribe to upload. Nobody ever goes to see that stuff. So we got this highlight there, try to keep that. And there's this little shape of here. This is all shadow, shadow. Yeah, it's gonna be cool, this is cool. Okay. And the nose is very lit up, so we'll get some once I bring in the white pen on this thing, I think we'll be looking pretty cool. I don't know if I'm gonna do, how long have I been doing this? Oh, well, almost an hour already, so yeah. This might be the only one I'm gonna do today, but oh well. You know, I think I explained a lot with how to like, how to go about drawing these kinds of things, like how to start out and just how to do this. And like I said, this is kind of just some practice for me and to have a little bit of fun here. Yeah, I mainly I do the same thing, Sarah. I, I always look, always click on my subscriptions. But sometimes if nobody has uploaded anything that I want to watch or something, I'll go see what YouTube recommends me, or or I'll just go do something else. <laughs> but yeah, subscriptions is the place to be for sure. YouTube needs a better way to find those scheduled posts. They are impossible to find. What do you mean? If you go to subscriptions, they're all there when I go to my, when I log into the other channels I have that are subscribed to this channel, I can see them all clearly, do, 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 in a line. 
I don't know, it's easy to see for me. I don't know what you talking about. Sister. What you talking about? Easy on a laptop, I mean. It's the only thing I use. Really? Well, you got something weird then. It does it for me. You must not be... Well, I guess you are subscribed, but I don't know. Uh, YouTube is just... I don't know anymore. Some people get notified, some people don't. Even then they click the bell and they do all the... Like, it's just weird. Weird things happen. I don't know who does what or what how they make it, how they get it to be so buggy all the time. Like, isn't all this stuff just ones and zeros? Shouldn't the code work for everybody the same? It's weird. All right, we can start shading this thing soon. I just want to get most of those like plain lines in there. By the way, guys, you don't have to do this in pen and ink. You can do this with uh, on this toned paper. You can get like a white pencil. I'll show you guys some of these I did in the past. Uh, after I draw this, as soon as I find my my other sketchbook, I'm not sure where I put it. Hmm. Yeah, I have another sketchbook just like this one. It's filled up. Oh, it's under here. Yeah, I'll show you guys real quick since I'm on the topic. I think they're in this one. I did some cool... Uh, I think I've shown these before, but I might as well show them right now. I did some cool graphite. I used like a white, white chalk pencil. So here's like an eye. I drew this from life. This was on, this, see this is the shape of that one that I have. It's on this like pedestal kind of base. But those are just some, uh, some studies of it that I've done. See, stuff like that from the back, large, you know, real simple basic lines, basic shading. So you can do this with just graphite and like a white pencil. It doesn't have to be pen and ink, but... Um, oh, here's a bunch. I did a bunch more. And another. That's from a painting. Somebody. Like a sergeant painting. But... Just other little... Studies of this thing. That's probably one of my favorites that I did. But, um... More and more. See, I've done the, studied this thing a lot. That's a good one, too. Um, did a really big one there. I think this is the last page I did. So, yeah, I've studied, I've studied this kind of thing a lot, you know. And this is me trying to, like, I was just softening it, just focusing on the shadows, shadow shapes. And then I started drawing animals. <laughs> with the white uh, that white chalk pencil. Pretty cool. Anyway. You guys have seen those before, some of you anyway. But I think, I, to me, I, I like the pen and ink because it's more permanent and it doesn't, doesn't smudge in your sketchbook, you know, like I looked back through that and I have charcoal in there and it's just everywhere and I hate using like those sprays and stuff. It's just pen and ink. It's so much easier because you don't have to worry about all that stuff, you know, you just kind of put the ink down and uh, the only thing you have to worry about is putting a line in the wrong spot. If you do that, then, nah, you know, 
then you have a little problem, but you don't ever have to worry about it smudging. You just have a mistake that you can't really fix, but it helps you uh, helps you learn from it because you can always go back and see that mistake staring at you, staring back at you, you know. So we'll just fill in all the shadow real quick. Um, just an even value. Just to unite the shadow areas. And we can go back and darken it. But already, like just doing what I just did, already you're starting to see the idea of light and shadow. Just from that basic stuff. I don't know why, but my head looks like it's like about to fall forward or something. I think I, I drew it. I didn't draw it like, I think this, this shape is too big. This cheekbone's sticking way too far out. You know, there's some, there's a few things that are off with it, but it still looks like a portrait to me. So it's all good. So I'll take it. And I haven't, you know, like I said, I haven't drawn this stuff in quite a while. Those ones I just showed you, I mean, I drew those like two years ago, I think. So it's been, it's been a little while since I've drawn some portraits and things. Yeah, exactly, Candy. I mean, that's, that's the point is like, you can create different values just by, you know, putting lines closer, farther apart. You know, I can make this side of this big plane here, I can make this side a bit darker just by making a few more hatch marks. And there you go, a little bit darker. But for this, I'm gonna do the whole thing because it's kind of, you know, it's better to simplify. So also what I wanna focus on, is what I'm gonna focus on more tomorrow as well when I talk about the light and shadow. I kind of have it planned out in my head a little bit, things to talk about, but trying to keep your values very simplified, three to four values. So the way to think about that, two values in the light, two values in the shadow, right? And then, uh, so if you do that, two basic values in the light, two basic values in the shadow, and then you have your high, then you have the lightest light, darkest dark, boom. You got plenty of values to play around. You got six values. But if you think about it as four simple main large values, so you have the dark shadow, you have reflected light. You have light hitting the skin and then you have mid-tone. So something to think about like that. Or you have, you know, the overall light and then, you know, kind of a brighter light, highlights, but, and then a light accent, dark accent. It's very simple. If you keep it simple, then that's, that's always the best way to do it is to just Keep it simple. And that goes for anything, drawings, paintings, whatever, you know. Two values in the light, two values in the shadow. I always kind of forget that kind of stuff, <laughs> but I try to remember it when I can, because it's important, you know. It's a, when you get, when you simplify your values, that's what gives a really strong, you know, a strong, uh, strong shape, a strong contrast to your your scene and everything. And usually probably my best paintings are when I do kind of simplify a bit more and get that strong message, you know, that strong message of light and shadow and everything. But 
Uh, just something to think about. Okay. What's going on, Philip? Thanks for tuning in. We're all doing well here, I think. Okay, so this is interesting because there are some planes here. There's some areas here where I'm kind of d debating. Kind of debating is it in light or is it in shadow right so there's you know um, so this plane of the nose here when I squint down it seems like it goes it seems like it's, it's very similar to this plane up here because it is facing really the same way towards the light or towards the shadow so I think it's probably a similar value similar value to that one so if I simplify, then we kind of lose this plane into the shadow. And I think that's a better overall read. And there's this plane of the nose here that kind of turns out under. Boom. So these simple, now we have shadow versus light. But so far we really only have, for the most part, one value in the light, one value in the shadow, right? Um, you know, you could argue I have two different values here in the dark, in the shadow. Um, so now for the light, this is the tricky part for me. I know there's a highlight on this eye, so I can draw that in. As soon as I get this pinned to right, there we go. There's a highlight on this eye, and this bottom plane. The bottom eyelid doesn't really have a highlight on there. Very small one. So if you guys, I'll show you the reference again. And you can see how the shape of my head is way different, a little bit off. So you can see the nose, if we squint, if you squint at the image, it's going to simplify the values. So you can see the nose is very, very light uh, in that one side of the head. But you can see kind of the middle of the head underneath the eye, the cheek, down to the neck. It's kind of darker, it's kind of mid-tone-y, kind of mid-tone. So that's kind of how I would simplify it. Yeah, you can see my head's kind of like morphed a bit compared to the reference, but whatever, did my best. But I want to be careful here because even though the nose is really bright, it's a much smaller shape than the head. So when I draw this thing, I don't want it to look, I almost want to, basically I want to shade this, the nose, the same way as I shade the head in the light. And what I think, what I think is since it's a smaller shape, Basically, smaller shapes, especially if it's surrounded by darkness like this, the smaller shapes are going to catch less light generally than larger shapes. It's just it's just how it works, you know. Um, like if you look at me right now, like this part of my nose or even this little shape is going to catch. It's less if you go to paint that. It's less light than you know this large shape up here even though they're both in the light, they're both receiving the same light source. Smaller shapes get darker in the light. So that's maybe what I wanna show here. And I think it'll still look brighter even though, you get what I'm saying? Hopefully that makes sense. So let's see if I can shade this thing and make it work. Let's see if I can make this pen work to begin with, okay.
<clears throat> yeah, it does take a lot of patience and stuff with this kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Oh, I think I drew a line wrong here. So if I study this again, this plane actually curves, comes down to the back of the head. So not supposed to have a line going up like that. Actually, it's so hard to see what's going on up there because it's all just the same color. So I'm going to keep, right now, I'm, I, I'm remembering to squint at the subject, at, at the reference photo, because I want to have a clear separation of the light and shadow. I don't want to get caught up in all the, the small shapes and all the differences of the light, the light versus shadow. So I want to keep these certain planes unified, you know? That's what simplification it really kind of is. It's like unifying this stuff, you know? Come on, why does this pin keep clogging up? So we'll see, we'll see what this ends up looking like. Hopefully I can keep control of this white pin. <laughs> Because it's, it's very bright, it's very easy to get very, very light with this thing. So I just want to be careful. But we'll see what, we'll see what happens here. I may have to put some white on this transitional tone and just space it out a lot more so that it looks less bright, but we'll see. We shall see. Just take it one shape at a time, one plane at a time here. Like I said, I've never done this with pen and ink before. Never shaded a portrait like this, like a portrait study. The only ones I've done, I've, I showed you guys pretty much all of them that I've done, so I haven't done a lot of study of this thing, but I've done a little bit. You know, I think this plane, when I squint, actually, I think this plane actually is in the light as well. So, let's keep it there. Oh my gosh, this pin is driving me nuts. It's supposed to be a better pin. I can't even get a line. Come on. Don't fail me now. You've been a good pen for a few weeks now. It's funny, when I go in right at the top of the page to test it, it works every time, works perfectly. And then when I go to make a stroke down here, it's like, it's a whole different piece of paper or something. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm just complaining now, but. So this plane up here is pretty transitional. It's almost, it's, I mean, it's almost in the shadow, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I know the nose is very bright. So that's kind of where we're at here. We have some Here's the reference real quick. So, yeah, I'm trying to so those middle planes there, like the cheek and everything, are those in light? I mean, you could say yes, but they're definitely they're definitely not as bright as the side of the head. So, you know, if you compare the top of the head to the side of the face there, the cheek and everything, much different value there. So I've got to be careful here. Got to be pretty careful. So if, I, if I'm going to shade the rest of these other planes in, I mean, this one's pretty dark. This one almost needs hatching of, of black, 
rather than white. Um, you know, this one almost needs just like some kind of, you know, like I said, I'm trying to keep it simple, but it is kind of part of the shadow. Um, very reflective light though. Um, <clears throat> So I do know that this plane I could almost use the jelly roll for the other ones because it, it's a little bit less light. You know, some of these planes seem to be in light. And now, like I said, if I switch, so now we kind of have, kind of have three values here. This midtone, the paper, the, the light, and the darks, right? And really, this whole thing down here is in light, actually. I'll do a little bit of that just to have some kind of continuity since I did put shadow down here. And what it does is it gives context to this neck a bit more. So if this whole thing down here is in light. And look, oh sure, now when I'm not drawn on the face, the whole thing draws perfectly. The pen just works beautifully. What's up with that? Just more complaining. Okay, hour and 20 minutes almost. Okay, so getting close to being done here, folks. Anyways, just fin figuring out, you know, these smaller areas. Um, but pretty crazy light versus shadow so far already. Definitely creates some form. Um, Exactly. Thanks for nothing, white pen, for sure. And I think I do want, I think I'm going to try to use this jelly roll. We'll see if I can get a fainter white from it. Um, at all, if at all. <laughs> of course not. But at the top of the page it draws, but down here it doesn't want to draw for some reason. It doesn't. What's wrong with the paper here compared to up here? What's the difference? So see the difference in value I'm trying to create? I'm trying to show like, okay, it is in light, but not as much, not as much light. But I don't really want it as dark as the paper because eh, it's just a little too dark. And this thing is just dead now, completely dead. Okay, have another one. I have another two of these, so that's good. Okay. And then this plane is even darker, so space it out even more. So now we get more of a smoother transition. So that's basically it. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the light and the shadow of this thing. And you know, there is like light going down this thing as well. Down this side. But I mean, that's really how you create form is like now if I was doing like a real portrait, you just smooth out where these planes you know, all these planes would just be a bit more subtle. You know, you'd have a subtle transition between the shadow and the light here. You know, this would still be kind of harsh because of the eyebrow, the eyes are more set in. But, you know, the cheeks around here, all this would be more soft. So the light would kind of fade out a bit easier. Same thing around the neck, be more cylindrical. 
but this shows, like I said, two values in the light and one to two values in the dark. I could still push the dark a little bit more maybe just to show that, you know, I could push the dark a bit more around the eyes because that's really where it's the darkest it seems. And then I'll leave these planes up here more reflected light value. You know, I, like I said, I didn't put a whole lot of reflected light in this scene. I would have liked to have more time to do more of these, but I'm definitely gonna do more of this stuff in the future, more portraits, studies, and stuff like this maybe. Um, just go with the flow of how I'm feeling about these kinds of things. Uh, Cause I would like to do one where I have more reflected light on the outside and then it has like a core shadow going up the whole form. I think that would be really cool, really nice to see. So I'm just, I'm just simplifying the shadows basically bringing all this together. Bringing all this together. And it looks like under here, there's a bit of reflected light and then the rest down here is in shadow, more shadow, deeper, darker shadow. But I appreciate you guys watching today, watching me kind of practice, basically. And that's, that's literally sometimes what these live streams are. You know, I'm not really trying to teach a certain thing or make it to be a tutorial or anything, but I try to explain my thinking a bit and I try to just show you guys like, it's just me practicing. You know, you don't really have to, sometimes it's not about creating a finished piece or anything. It's just putting in some practice you know, when all this could be more reflected light, but, uh, you know, showing like maybe the light from above or some kind of bounced light or something. Um, maybe this plane here could be a, just a bit darker, but like I said, simplifying, trying to simplify. So I'll kind of bring that one together with the rest of the, around the eyes and then leave that one the way it is. So now we have a more, boom, simplified, Two values in the dark, two values in the light. So, uh, that's kind of what it's, uh, you know, you try to go for with your paintings and your drawings. Obviously, it doesn't have to be this blocky looking when you do the two values in the light, two values in the dark. It's just, that's kind of the idea of what you want to think about. Um, I'm trying to think of trying to think of a painting I have that kind of demonstrates that. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of have one here. I'll show you guys real quick. So check out this painting. This is oil painting I did. But you can see, you know, light here, light on the trees and the light of the leaves. That's the light values. And then the dark values, I have overall shadow color, shadow tone. And then I have, if you guys can see that kind of, I have, oh yeah, here you go. That's better, much better. And then I have the very dark darks in there. Um, so, tried to keep, tried to keep the certain kind of values. It's not, it's not a completely, 
it, it just demonstrates that it doesn't have to be so blocky like the way I've drawn here. This is just the subject. You know, you could do, I'll explore this as the week progresses, of course, you know. We'll explore uh, this idea more of the values and painting portraits and stuff. Hopefully I can pull it off. But, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a, a good something to try to remember. That's all. Keep it simple, man. You, you, cause, cause you know when you look outside and you look in nature, I mean there's over, I mean, tons and tons of different values. Just by looking at a tree, I mean you could see you know twenty different values. But the point of art, not the point of art, but the way to create something strong that's easily readable is to simplify it right we simplify it into two or three different values four values three to four values so i started off if you guys remember i started off very first by separating it into two values separated the shadow from the light and then i just broke down those two big sections that i created so everything that's how everything starts off the drawing part started off with a large shape and then went to medium shapes like I did over here, the first one. I did the medium sized shape of the whole mouth. I did the shape of the whole nose. You know, the shape of the whole head, the shape of the whole neck. <clears throat> then went into the medium, <coughs> excuse me, folk. Went to the medium shapes and then the smaller shapes. And then I did the same thing when I was shading. You know, I did, I separated the large value uh, I, I did the largest value shapes and then the medium and smaller shapes. So that's that's always kind of the route that I try to remember to take. So so it's the indication of the reality, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's a suggestion, suggestion of reality. You know, the simplification and suggestion of reality, basically. You know, and I could sit here all day and refine this, you know, like I could sit here and, and, and draw more sharper lines for these planes, and that actually might help this thing look a little bit better, uh, to be honest. But, you know, at this point, it doesn't really, at this point, it doesn't really matter. As long as you just understand, you know, these kind of ideas. But it just, this one, it just looks a little rough. It looks a little rough. Yeah, see, I kind of outlined the, the light planes there. <clears throat> oh, I need some water. I think the smoke is like getting to my throat. Makes my throat hurt a lot easier. Been feeling like that lately. Gotta get out of this place. I need to go somewhere. Travel somewhere. Yeah, I mean, cubes are good. I mean, this is one big cube, really, you know? This is the front of the cube, this is the side of the cube, the back of the cube, we can't see the other side of the cube. You know, it's on a cube right here, so. Um, thanks, guys, I appreciate it. Um, I've never been trained either, honestly. I just, I just learned from people that are professionals and uh, try to use what they say, what they do. But uh, definitely be sure to check out my website, shaverfineart.com. Got some drawings and paintings on there for sale. Definitely check it out. Greatly appreciated. I also have a support page you can check out. You can donate to me. You can check out my Patreon page to support me every month. Get some cool stuff. And uh, I also have a band camp where you can check out music that I create. All those links are on my website, shaverfineart.com. Um, I know today wasn't wasn't much, but 
Portraits do take a little bit longer to draw, you know. Always looks, uh, you know, it's always it's always more difficult. It always takes a little bit longer to do stuff like this. Um, so yeah, looking forward to doing more of this tomorrow. We'll focus more on some lighting scenarios. I'll try to do, I might do like some small, we'll do some small studies like this. We got some small paper. So we'll do some, try to just work with value tomorrow and do some really quick, small studies of shapes and stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. We'll try to do some different lighting scenarios, more reflected light, less reflected light, different angles. We'll try to do like, two to three maybe um so yeah yeah mary i create some music uh so if you ever watch any of my like plain air adventures recently the music that are used in all those videos like the last two years all the music on my channel has been created by me so i make like hip-hop kind of music i make piano tracks you know just whatever i'm feeling like making i just create it so um, anyway guys, check it out, looks pretty cool, pretty darn cool, so uh, anyway, that's uh, it for today, so first day of portrait week, done, didn't do much, but uh, we'll keep it going, we'll keep it going, so yeah, I do it all man, I edit all the videos, film all the videos, come up with all the stuff, make music, yeah. So try to do do everything. Try to do it all. But uh, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.